faith and uh, specifically a style of thinking that takes the sting out of death. I mean, that really is the core of religion. You know, in geopolitical terms, we want the sting in death. You know, we do not want groups of people well armed who are not afraid to die. I mean, that is really that the only thing that that allowed us to live more or less stably perched on on the brink of of Armageddon with the Soviet Union was this this mutual disinclination to die. And once you start getting the people who are dewy-eyed with their with their convictions of of how beautiful the afterlife is going to be, uh, you start getting those people uh, holding the the keys to the the missiles. Then all bets are off. I mean, then to, it, the, the thing that it, it's it's very it's very difficult for secularists and and even religious moderates in our culture to realize is that people really do believe this stuff. People really are motivated by the contents of these holy books. People really do fly planes into buildings because they think they're going to get to paradise and they're going to get 72 virgins. Uh, and incidentally, if you really believe this stuff, that it is quite rational to do that. You know, it's it, given what uh, jihadists, to speak of, of them specifically again, given what jihadists claim to believe, they are acting perfectly rationally. It's not like they're insane and, and acting chaotically. They are, if you thought that the creator of the universe wanted nothing more than to have infidels killed so that he could, he could torture them for eternity in the fires of hell, and uh, he was just waiting to reward you and your brethren with an eternity of, of celestial delights, and not only would you get to paradise, but you'd pave the way for all your loved ones to get there after you, it is just unambiguously rational to to kill infidels in in some some uh, Quranically acceptable way uh, and then we can just then all you have to do is split hairs and 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 get a fatwa as to whether or not it's acceptable to fly a plane into a building when you uh, when what provocation is is uh, is uh, necessary for that and people like Osama bin Laden seek those fatwas and and do this kind of theological hair splitting when you talk like this, you make me think that we're doomed. Are we doomed? Uh, I have no idea. You know, I mean, it's it's really it's hard to see a basis for real optimism here because I I don't even see the rudiments of a reasonable conversation on these subjects happening at the level that uh, that it really should happen at. Okay, so there's a uh, a Christian or even just any religious person watching this right now. And they're saying, yeah, what you say makes a lot of sense. You've got logic on your side. You've got reason on your side. You've got evidence on your side. You're really smart. Mm -hmm. But I feel God in my life. Right. Uh, how can you possibly deny that? Um, a few ways, in fact. Uh, first of all, we have to look closely at what this claim is. I, the claim to feel God. How is that different from the claim that a Buddhist would make to feel uh, certain changes in his state of consciousness without e without any reference to God. Uh, I would argue that any Christian or any religious person who is willing to talk merely about the data of their experience and talk about the the joy they feel when when praying to Jesus, say, or the the positive changes in their lives born of of, of the experience of prayer. Uh, such a person, when they look at the experience of a Buddhist, uh, the analogous experience of a Buddhist, will have to see that, that Buddhists indeed do have that kind of experience. They, they experience rapture and bliss and, and they, they weep tears of joy in, in certain devotional circumstances uh, without any reference to Jesus. So uh, invariably what a Christian is doing is, is, oh, first let me back up and acknowledge that there's no doubt that doing the Jesus prayer, for instance, for 18 hours a day is going to radically change your moment-to-moment -moment experience of the world, very likely for the better. Now, a Christian doing that practice will interpret those changes as a confirmation of Christian dogma, as a sign that Jesus really is, in fact, the Son of God, born of a virgin, say. Now, it should be pretty clear that's not the best interpretation of the data. The moment you see a Hindu having more or less the same transformations based on praying to Shiva, and a Buddhist having more or less the same transformations doing a 
a, uh, a totally non-theistic practice of chanting, say. So there's a deeper principle here. There is a, just the possibility, the neurological possibility, the psychological possibility of transforming our experience by deliberately using our attention in certain ways. And we have to find some way of talking about that that does not that is not parasitic on superstition and mythology and and our separate cultural traditions.